Oh, the this process conference will now be recorded. Okay, yeah, and, uh, system. and uh, this is what my background and uh, uh, my age is 52, uh, Mrs. Sagar. Okay, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I almost took 25, 26 years of his experience. Yeah. So then just, uh, you know, I'm learning this might be, you know, might be a window will open uh, for me uh, to become a functional uh, no, consultant. Right. So uh, before we go uh, go through further, what is your advice based on my profile? Uh, and, see, uh, yeah, I could say that you know uh, there will be never ending for a learning. Okay, mm -hmm. a, a, something that's but you have very good retail experience. So mm -hmm. when you see, you are just learning the product. You are not learning some uh, retail business because you already mm -hmm. have an experience in the retail business. How the business Correct. process will work how the this is the most important for any any consultant or someone like even like we work like i have a two years of experience in is retail i worked in different models of like you know uh, 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 i work mostly the europe and us regions so for the sap all the retail process like i worked in home and furniture retail home and furniture retail fashion as well as retail groceries currently i'm also working for retail groceries project so mm -hmm. we every time we face certain different different challenges in the uh, retail business process because we get new requirement which we can uh, fit some some of the retail process we can fit in a standard and sometimes like you know we need to do enhancement so this product whatever you are going to learn just give you uh, what are the fit business process and uh, mm -hmm. what we can uh, you know uh, when you take any business process here in a current way uh, because everyone are moving to SAP and 80% uh, uh, of the world is now uh, retail is uh, in SAP. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, now there is a new, uh, like, you know, if you see that uh, uh, any business process, only 60% is covered in a standard SAP fit. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the remaining everything like 40% uh, uh, you need to do enhancement. Okay. You have mm -hmm. a because you uh, you can you can ask anyone like you know uh, if their business process how much of your business process is covered with the standard means they say only 60 percent okay mm -hmm. they use it SAP, but 60 percent they enhance their self like they need to develop because every business process doesn't fit uh, into that and there are big organizations where they directly agree with sap where uh, you know they have direct they implement their project with sap that also like they uh, sap enhance the product for them like you know and most of the changes so it's fine like you know uh, you, can, you can start because you might know uh, most of the east uh, side business process and everything of a retail so this product is just give you overview and uh, you will get some system knowledge this learning is mostly about you know about the system knowledge and uh, you want to navigate first uh, you need a first uh, hands on on the SAP so that it will help you in a, you know, uh, to go to completely SAP or something. Mm. So, so no, after, but, but after learning, after learning, sorry to uh, disturb you, sorry yeah. to cut you. After learning, mm -hmm. okay, and uh, yeah, definitely I have to put some experience, correct? Without yep. putting some experience, it's very difficult. Uh, yeah. Because I am also new to this uh, IT industry, but uh, this is what um, I've been advised. Mm -hmm. uh, by a few of my friends, uh, I have to put a minimum five years of experience. Otherwise, uh, you know, I cannot crack it anyway. Right. And uh, if I put uh, at least a five years of experience, so what kind of uh, uh, jobs I will uh, I will get? Like uh, uh, now, uh, uh, I can see that uh, in your case, like uh, suppose uh, not only the experience, like uh, you have a very good business knowledge and uh, you have a great experience on uh, retail process. Just the mm -hmm. system knowledge, if you can get uh, put it that now you can get almost all like a retail project manager. You will not get a functional consultant, IT functional consultant because they are the junior level. They mm. just only, you know, they go into the system, they debug and everything. But if you put a like a, along with your retail experience, if you add five years of experience to your mm. five years on SAP, if you add it, you almost will get like project architect level. Okay. You mm. mostly like a design the things. Okay. You, mm. you design the things like, you know, there was from SAP, but you should know about SAP first. Okay, in order to get into that design, uh, like designation, you should know about SAP. So from SAP, we are uh, planning to uh, 
transfer the um, sales information to some other legacy system okay mm. how the sales information can like you have this uh, uh, to in order to transfer the sales like you have a wp1 i doc like this information we anyway we are transferring from car so you can build one more interface like you can guide to some of the consultant take this i doc and uh, use this i doc for transferring to the legacy information make a uh, mapping sheet that's all like that's how you can guide at a higher level but you should know sap for sure 100 percent. otherwise so you cannot know that yeah yeah you don't want me to position as a function consultant correct so you want me to position as a project manager uh, means project ar uh, solution architect sap solution, solution architect. Ar sap solution architect yes okay Okay. Yeah, I have seen the people like uh, even my current uh, solution architect. He is also like uh, uh, he has a total like uh, 15 years experience. Out of that, he has only a SAP experience of five years. Hmm. But he has very good uh, uh, like he is uh, uh, very good at uh, uh, logistics. Actually, you know the hmm. complete uh, AWM and uh, warehouse management logistics. Warehouse so, management. Yes. Yeah. So. He is doing like he was there in that position because with your experience, if you still you you cannot go with a consultant it means you can do that. It's up to your choice. I can say that. But it's a junior level. What I heard is uh, what I was checking in the market is uh, it's a very junior level. It's a very junior level, like uh, because with your experience, you already have a twenty five years experience. And I mm. say that uh, uh, I still work as a consultant. I need something a package of like you know. Uh, 10 15 lakhs is fine for me then you can go with that but i don't Function think you offer that. Correct. so you correct. you claim minimum 35 40 plus 40 plus lakhs right yes, in a yes, so yes, you, yes, you, are, yes. you would be current currently you are already doing with a 30 plus lakhs and you may ask for 30 plus or 40 plus lakhs okay yeah. so in that case like no one will give you a sap consultant role okay junior consultant or senior consultant role because their package mm. will be uh, limited to below 20 lakhs only. So if you are <laughs> yeah, 14 to 15 lakhs, there's a grade yeah. also. He was checking yeah. this, but he was told me. And the no. need is almost around 20 lakhs, something like that. Correct? No, Indian market has been changed a lot. You know, the mm -hmm. <laughs> Indian market recently, during, due to the COVID hit, it has changed a lot. Now the people yeah. are like uh, giving up to 30 lakhs for a uh, uh, seven, eight years experience. Ah, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> It has changed, like uh, okay, uh, so, so up to 20, 25 lakhs they are giving it, but it depends, like how the market uh, currently market is booming, like anything, okay. Mm -hmm. So if you go for solution architect level, they can pay you like 35 minimum, 35 plus lakh. So this would be your salary range. Okay, that mm -hmm. fits your experience and uh, also your knowledge. That's all, uh, which I can recommend. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, basically what I was looking is under in this training course. Uh, you know, I want to have uh, in-depth uh, course details, like, uh, you know, run through of the course and at the same time with uh, some projects experience, with the dummy projects experience and at the same, at plus, uh, you know, uh, like if you go to a job, join in any job uh, from day one, how to start your job. Like uh, I'm into retail industry, I'm into sales, okay. I mean, uh, even I was uh, heading the country operations in my previous organizations. Okay, so I know uh, what uh, from day one, what to start, where to start. Right. I can make my plan and uh, I can uh, work further down. Yeah. Okay, but uh, in IT, in SAP, okay, learning, okay, this is okay, but uh, projects is okay. But uh, from day one, uh, if I want to, if I get a job somewhere, here, so mm -hmm. what do they expect from me? So I will, start. Start. I will give you a oh, de detail. Uh, today introduction, basically we introduce how this helps and how the project will be there, real time experience. Yeah, okay? yeah. So the thing is, suppose today, like uh, uh, you joined a job, okay? It depends, like for first of all, we get to know in the interview itself, that is that an implementation project or is it a rollout project or is it a support project, okay? Mm -hmm. Implementation is the fresh project where they are currently using some legacy systems legacy system might be like some uh, uh, some microsoft project they are using uh, for their retail process and everything okay they want mm -hmm. to move to sap okay so what they have they, they uh, as you already work like you know every day you have a business process right you will have everyday business process what happens like when it comes to the store 
or when whenever how how do you define the product sales and all the things right product price final price and all the things right you you might have it yes yeah in your daily process so these yes. all business processes will be collected as a user stories first of all okay Correct. this is Correct. that like uh, suppose if any new product has been introduced into our uh, business so what happens we will maintain all these characteristics of a product and we also finalize the price how i finalize the price it's just not like that i bought this for like uh, uh, 10 euros and i put this uh, as a 15 euros no this is not the thing so whenever i was defining my final price i also mm -hmm. make sure that what is my competitor price right mm -hmm. correct so if my competitor is selling like uh, for 12 euros say that i uh, i'll see that what is my cost price i'll i'll make sure that if my competitor is selling for low price i'll i'll also not sell for low price because i may get into losses if i sell for uh, that price okay mm -hmm. i'll uh, but i'll also validate with my competitor and uh, if it is uh, profitable then only i'll put the same price or below the price and make sure that i'll get the minimum profits where i'll not get into losses okay uh, this kind of user stories will be defined first uh, so these all the euro stories so uh, the if if you say that you we will be having a different different consultant okay master data consultant to maintain all the article master vendor master so purchase info record which is a supplier information all these things okay and uh, sales sales consultant sd consultant uh, he will define all the uh, pricing procedure which we call like okay how the price to be defined how the price first of all how i need to what is the current pricing model in the legacy and how how i should define in my current sap system whether can be be done standard way or how the price final price to be calculated whether to we should have some g conditions so they are using certain calculation model that is is that can be fit in a standard no it cannot be fit okay then we need to introduce some g model like uh, some enhanced model so yeah let it be get calculated in the middleware and final prices should be put into sap okay this is how like logistics people will define their business process their user stories okay and they, everything will be put in place like uh, yeah this is the uh, uh, how my shipping will be done how my picking will be done all these things okay how many dishes i have how many sites i have so first how i should go like i cannot go directly everything into sap okay mm -hmm. i should make sure that i'll go with a fast dc like first store is a pilot go live i'll do uh, and uh, at a pilot go live you will have a lot of challenges and once you fix everything and if the pilot go live is going very good with sap then you will go for the other stores and other dcs okay this is how you plan your model and you start doing your standard configuration and the enhancements and everything and you do the some uh, you give some you do some ft as a functional consultant and you give the testers with the different different scenarios to test and there is a sit end to end okay end to end testing it's just like you are testing within sap now you mm. check with uh, some interfaces like uh, mm -hmm. i want to check the price in label uh, uh, or systems okay so there are some e pos or retail j systems where you transfer your price from sap to uh, retail systems and see that whether they are appearing properly or not if the article is properly displayed if the price is properly displayed for the product if the transactions are happening properly and the transactions are coming to car uh, in a proper way this all the end to end testings which you do with a different different uh, scenarios okay then you give the business uat like you actual business data you do in a Uh, we use different different systems for this okay we will not do everything in a single system so uh, and uh, we will give for uat where the business will uh, do certain uh, real time scenario they make sure that everything is working then we will go for a go live okay this is the pilot go live and then we do uh, there will be warranty and where we fix some issues if there are some uh, data issues or something and once the pilot is done pilot store is done and uh, everything is very smooth for the next stores it is just a roll out okay that's what i am speaking about a roll out project where the roll out mm. project what you know what you do is already the blueprint is been made as a part of mm. implementation okay mm. now you just what you need to do is you need to migrate from legacy to here and you know uh, you cannot hold your stores while doing the migration right there is a part of it called dual running 
Dual running mm. means where currently orders will be created in legacy, but the orders will be also parallelly uh, transferred to the SAP. And uh, this is a dual run mode and certain part of mm. transactions will be done in uh, SAP and in both the systems you will do. You will make it sync systems. And okay, what okay. On, on a pilot, you just do like everything will be done only in SAP. You will stop all the process in the uh, legacy and you will continue with the SAP. OK, that's how it is done. This is a rollout project and the next it comes like support project. You know, support is nothing but you have done blueprint and you have done the rollout. But after the rollout, like the process will be there, like a new product will be introduced into your system. OK, business will be creating a new products. They might be doing some mistakes and they see that there are no orders created or there are no automatic orders or there are no some uh, some issues will be there with the product importing. So this support team, what they do is they fix this kind of issues. And uh, suppose uh, in a current blueprint, what we have done is if the product can be created, only uh, one product can be created at one time. So, but mm -hmm. in a future, like you may also need uh, like a lot of products to be introduced at a single go, then support will take care of the tool like uh, to create a multiple product at a single go like that. So, and the maintenance and everything will be done by support. So these are the different kinds of projects uh, like when you see into the market, you know. Okay, this okay. Is the market. So now whenever you got uh, like uh, into the IT, okay, SAP IT, you should make sure that what kind of project is that, okay. Uh, I would like to clearly say that if it is completely implementation project, so you will have a lot of time to understand the business. Okay, mm -hmm. how the current mm -hmm. business are doing and you will get a lot of uh, buffer to do some um, R&D uh, in the system mm -hmm. to implement that. Okay, mm -hmm. and secondary the rollout project rollout project is very, very busy project. It's like that <laughs> every day there is already done. There will be process steps will be there. Cut over steps will be there. You just go and uh, push the things or the maintain the things or the, you, you take you you will not get all the process at one go. You'll, you'll be assigned with only one process, like you are a master data consultant, say that, okay? Mm -hmm. So you'll be only uh, responsible for um, master data migration as well as that maintenance, if there are any corrections, that like it's a kind of by hearted process, okay, mm -hmm. which you do. And the support, like uh, support is that already migrated things or something, if there are some issues, the incidents will be raised where you will be working on the incident to fix that uh, article master is corrected or something. Um, uh, and uh, like you, if you go to the support project, you need to be uh, existing user manual. You should be able to read everything together first. Okay. Either, mm -hmm. However, you are experienced. You are like a 12 years experience in SAP or 20 years experience in SAP. It doesn't matter. Because whenever you go to the new project, their business process is different than the standard. Everyone Correct. doesn't use the standard. Most of the people never use the standard. Okay. Correct. On top Correct. of standard, they enhance something. Okay. You should know about the condition types and all the things, how the behavior. So you need to go, you need to read a lot of user manuals. Then only you need to get into the support project. Okay. Mm. That's how you are, uh, you know, uh, you work in the IT, current IT, SAP IT team. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much for your overview. Yeah. <laughs> no worries. Very so... good information. No, this is a very good information, very generic uh, information, which uh, even I don't know because I said as I'm a layman, so yeah, yeah. I don't know much. So I keep asking these kind of questions because I don't have much of uh, info. Yeah. So this is uh, like you know, uh, <laughs> once you work in like a three, four projects, this is the same thing. And I mostly worked every, I never work for any manufacturing or uh, petroleum. I worked, as I mentioned that I worked completely in the retail only. Retail fashion, oh. retail home and furniture and uh, retail uh, groceries currently. So retail whenever grocery. you work. Fashion also you work like a uh, SAP, it's for, these are different for more modules yeah. also. I, I started, when I started my career, there was only ACC, okay, R3 first, mm -hmm. okay, R3. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, uh, then I moved to uh, ECC. Then mm -hmm. uh, it was S4 HANA. So I had mm -hmm. certifications on R3, S, uh, ECC, and S4 HANA. Okay, like mm -hmm. that. <laughs> so when I like around something like 2017 or something, there was some IS retail certification. Now you mm -hmm. don't have any IS retail certification here. 
okay yeah. you have only retail modules s4 hana like sourcing and procurement sales and distribution logistics these are the mm. three modules if you uh, just uh, crack these three modules then you are a retail consultant okay mm. so everything okay. is covered in these three modules okay then uh, we used to have like um, uh, earlier we used to have irt 310 irt 320 for pricing uh, Uh, IRT 330 for assortment different modules like IRT for purchasing IRT 340 350 like that five courses mm -hmm. used to be there so now it's not like that it's uh, like three they have divided into three sub modules that's all okay mm -hmm. and uh, I was also experiencing car uh, retail promotional PMR as well as uh, uh, FNR uh, SEM module forecast and replenishment mm -hmm. module. And uh, I'm also like uh, I work on like post outbound and inbound like uh, and for uh, all the car processes like you know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. OSA, yeah. OSA, and OPP, omni-channel promotional pricing all the things. So yeah, this is like whenever you enter into retail business as well, like uh, uh, no one will tell you that which module to use no one knows that okay as you should know that what are your business process based on that you define your uh, uh, business process modules like you know um, either you want to take like uh, uh, suppose uh, you are a manufacturing uh, uh, you joined a manufacturing project okay then you don't need any car or something where you do only you, you need only mm module sourcing and procurement module that's all and a pp module production planning module like that mm -hmm. so this is how you define and uh, uh, and we need not we should not worry about it first of all because whenever mm -hmm. we are buying a product we all, you will be always having uh, sap will be involved in that it's not you mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. sap will confirm you what are your they will check what are your business process based on that yeah you need a fico module uh, you also like whenever you are buying uh, your uh, module like you you should have this thing you will have you can cover this business process with this module and you can cover this uh, sales model uh, using the sales module you can cover your pricing module all the things they will suggest you okay and they always try to push you to buy uh, you know the advanced module like the right uh, you know whenever you go them like they always uh, ask you to buy this uh, uh, enhanced order forecast module then this, uh, this is a new model which you have introduced like the planning for the planning they have introduced the ods order and delivery mm -hmm. scheduling so they mm -hmm. always insist you to buy and uh, you should be able to uh, you know your business process more than any, anyone right so mm -hmm. you should be very clear i don't need that much i don't want to invest on that okay i i can cover with a standard mrp or with a standard planning calendar which is which already there in the system because mm -hmm. it depends how is your usage if you are like uh, right retail groceries have a time level manage time level they need a time level uh, scheduling for a fresh product right fresh products it's like uh, every day i need a two schedules like a morning at a early morning 5 o'clock i should have a fresh uh, ordering and uh, mm -hmm. you like today i am getting 100 quantity out of that 50 quantities you should send me in the morning uh, by 6 am and uh, afternoon 12 am you should send like a fresh leafy vegetables all these things because otherwise from the vendor i should receive like that in a different scheduling so this information for this kind of retail groceries project they need ods but uh, sap always try to push for everyone this to buy this one that thing but you should be sure that no i am a manufacturing consult uh, we are a manufacturing project i hope we don't need that much enhanced module we are just comfortable with the standard planning calendar we use the standard planning calendar which comes as a part of a standard mrp system erp mm -hmm. system like that you should be able to Uh, know that that comes all with the, the experience and uh, you know a uh, lot of discussions with the SAP. Whenever you go to SAP, you also get to know that you know in a, during the your uh, first introduction, they will explain the each and every functionality of the uh, modules and everything uh, because you will be there in the uh, sales team, right? You know the mm -hmm. so uh, and you will be explaining the user your business user stories to the sap and they will suggest you the final modules what you need to buy and you should be also uh, involved in the discussion so to get the final okay draft like how many modules you want, which modules you want to buy as a part of your erp and uh, uh, where you are going to use it that's all okay 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 uh, great thank you 
so now like in this like uh, the I understand your main requirement uh, okay the about the uh, why you want to learn uh, sap retail especially um and uh, whenever you are having a retail i can suggest you that you should know how what is the business process what is the standard uh, functionality like you take a, a article master or vendor master or allocation tables what are they and all the things and uh, you should know how what are the transactions to use it and everything is like you know you need to do r d okay uh, mm -hmm. so only standard process okay and uh, when you go to the new company uh, it's like uh, if someone comes and asks you business okay uh, i am facing some issue with uh, automatic ordering so i have a problem with that you can suggest that okay you can use allocation table mm -hmm. but whether we can use allocation tables uh, for the business or not it always not this is the standard functionality available but it is not 100% uh, whether they can use or not. So, because their business data will be different. Okay, allocation is table is something. Suppose I create some allocation tables. Let's say that, um, uh, like, uh, take a seasonal products. So, seasonal products are like, you know, uh, at a stores, you need some uh, till paper, right? Till printing paper. So, uh, or the tissues or some other things, okay, for the store uses. Uh, so these things, uh, you order for store seasonally based on the requirement okay you Correct. don't order uh, every day or something this is seasonal requirement for uh, your uh, uses purpose okay so uh, how do i place the order because store manager will give that these are my list of employees these are my everyday sales and transaction like uh, this is my store is a very big store i need this much quantity okay mm -hmm. store manager will give that Mm -hmm. and uh, like uh, this is uh, some other say that okay i am a small store i'll i'll get very least number of customers so i don't need this much of uh, quantity for this product so this is my quantity everything they will give so every time i can't go and manually add it or manually create in the system so what happens is i'll create some allocation tables okay mm -hmm. what are allocation tables they are the push uh, the push pull method so where you like uh, you give store id and this is the quantity and the, this is the Del this is order day and this is the delivery day how you delivery decide the quantities sorry quantity I the quantity? see the quantity is to define like uh, if you are not using the fnr system say that mm -hmm. uh, fnr is a forecast and replenishment system if you are not mm -hmm. using that one then obviously you know uh you you need to go to the store manager and you need to get the quantities okay it's a what manually. Time. There's no, uh, there's no logic or uh, there's no That's formula to apply. I, I'm just coming to that to get into that mm -hmm. logic. So I don't want to do anything automatically. It should do that. So mm -hmm. for that, you need to have some historical sales data, right? You have, yeah. you should have a historical sales. Like what is your usage? Okay. Mm -hmm. So Correct. that historical sales data, there are two models here. Okay. One is the UDF. This is the niche modules. Uh, the other one is the FNR. Uh, okay, I'm also FNR expert as well. I'm SEM and FNR expert as well. Like, you know, FNR is a forecast and replenishment module. Okay, mm -hmm. where do what this, uh, the first one was FNR, which, uh, and the, now the recent one is the UDF, Unified Demand Forecasting. So uh, what you send is you send the historical sales uh, of a product and you send the last, minimum two historical sales, what you send. Okay, and you also send the listing and uh, what is the product characteristics and all the promotions, demand influence factors. So if there are any promotions or something like, you know, uh, everyday sales is something like you are using only like uh, two bundles of uh, tilt texture, tilt, tilt paper, okay? But when there is a sales, like the sales also increase some uh, uh, like a normal 100 to 150 percentage, right? Like, mm -hmm. So you will be using more number of like, uh, you on the day you'll be using 10 bundles of uh, tilt text. So these kind of influence factors also you send to the FNR. What FNR will do is based, it has its own Bayesian algorithm. Okay, uh, sorry. Uh, so with that, what it does is it will see the historical sales and it will take average of historical sales. And it will also, if there are any influence factors like promotions, it will also put on the day prior to that, you should have this much of uh, stock in your system. It will also consider the your stock, current stock, and it will also check your uh, open orders. If there are incoming orders, 
based on that it will propose an order proposal which in come in term generate an purchase order okay mm -hmm. so this is one thing and there is a you know uh, right now uh, than the bayesian algorithm which is there in uh, fnr right now there is a linear regression uh, method where uh, algorithm uh, which is used in uh, udf unified demand forecast it will also take some historical says it will also have some it will use some the forecasting model in the udf is uh, far better than the fnr bayesian algorithm okay that's what that thing. so so now you will teach me udf also i'll just go through overview okay mm. Uh, see, oh. retail process in order to it's the just overview of each and every process. Okay. 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 If you want to know the UDF, then that is a completely a different workshop. <clears throat> okay. 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 No, I'm uh, asking you. Yeah. Because yeah. Uh, first time I heard this, I know only Apple retail. Now there is a UDF. Okay. So it's a UDF. So if I yeah. want to learn UDF, this is a part of you. I definitely, I don't think this is a part of uh, this program. UDF is a separate uh, workshop, correct? Car is a separate workshop. See, um, to get into expertise, you need to know each and uh, like, uh, suppose you are a UDF consultant, you should be 100% efficient in UDF. Okay. If you are a car consultant, you should know about like OAA, OPP, o OSA, and POS inbound, outbound, and UDF because UDF is and uh, promotional PMR as well, which is a part mm. of car module. Okay. If you want to know IS retail consultant, you just go through overview of everything normal. Like what are the okay. process? Okay. So you will show me over you. Do you run through UDF and everything? Correct. In this program? UDF I don't run through because this is not a UDF workshop. Okay. We'll walk through also. We walk through the concepts of uh, concepts. Uh, UDF uh -huh. and all the things. Okay. Okay. And okay. Uh, retail, we especially look into ERP module. Okay. SAP, S4 HANA, ERP module. Okay. okay. There are different, okay. different system. Okay. We have access to only right now. We are working on only SAP, S4 HANA, ERP module. ERP module. That's a retail module. Correct. Yes, retail module. Okay, here we also receive some information from car that we just discuss. Okay. Ah, okay. Part. Okay. In retail, yes. you have MM, SD, everything is there. Correct. Okay. But Correct. Correct. if Correct. you are MM consult, if you want to know only MM, we discuss only MM master data. Organization unit is a basic thing, and uh, MM like article vendor, and we will go in depth into the system and we see that. Okay. Okay. If you want to learn about retail, we discuss about retail processes like MM we will cover. We can't like if you want to learn complete uh, uh, in depth everything, then it is like, you know, one year course. OK, <laughs> we are going into the, uh, we are going to we, not like that. We just going to suppose if I say that if you ask me that uh, you are you are going for MM consultant. OK, say that. Uh, only the article topic article master topic i will cover you for uh, you know uh, almost all like you know uh, five days or something like six hours i'll take it but when you mm -hmm. be in a retail con you are taking a retail is retail uh, thing mm -hmm. i'll mm -hmm. take a article master only 20 to 30 minutes only because you have a huge number of topics to cover right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's how it is like you know how the how the topics are covered Okay. So you can also teach MM also? IS Retail has already the MM and all the things, right? MM, but in depth as a MM materials management completely. Article master, teach. that's what I'm saying. How to create oh, yeah. our, all the things that I'll we will discuss here. Okay. okay. We okay. are not going to each and every field and every field functionality we are not going to discuss then it would be a one year course for sure okay for you yeah. actually what happened is uh, yesterday somebody was advising me that uh, you know when i'm uh, when i want to learn sap is retail they advised me you should have an overview of a sap sg and uh, sap uh, mm also mm -hmm. uh, overview means at least you should run through or you should learn uh, because you have an idea you are not going as a sap senior consultant or junior consultant to have this one you need to have overview so yeah. overview we cover mm hd and uh, logistics all these three modules hold it's as a, a cycle. retail okay cycle, retail cycle yes, yes. 
it's called as a retail okay if you yeah. ask me that only article topic like if you say me like a uh, inner retail module i'll discuss only okay retail is retail uh, okay article master is there article master this is the art what is the uh, core functionalities of article master how do you create article master and how many tabs are there that's 15 minutes topic i'll cover in retail module but when you say about like mm module uh, I'll mm. go into Article Master today. I just discuss only how to create it and different ways of creation, mass creation, and all the things. And uh, okay. then I'll go to each and every tab. So each and every tab, like EN, what is EN? Okay, mm. uh, what is like uh, uh, transportation unit and all the things like what are the every field we will discuss like that. Okay, okay, okay. So that's a MM. Okay, that's a different thing. Okay, okay. that's how. Okay. It it depends like if you want to cover more topics then we will go to retail no no no, no. i just want to learn only mm module then we will go in a different way that's how you uh, retail uh, retail retail covers uh, you know part of mm part of sd logistics yeah. it's a cycle no it's uh, yeah. everything yeah, it's, it's everything it's everything how that's the reason you like you have a topics like you know uh, if you are able to see my screen like we also discuss about how the partner determination is done and the article master site customer or vendor master and mm. assortments and listing you know how your products has been listed and uh, what is uh, external procurement how uh, like you know like in your business process you also need to know whether you have the external procurement and internal procurement okay mm. it depends like you just in your for your store only the supplier is a vendor you always buy a products from the vendor because you are a small scale industry or something you buy only products from the vendor that's all nothing you buy from the vendor and you sell in your store this is your business mm -hmm. person mm -hmm. there are things no i also have the distribution channels warehouses for me at different different locations so i buy in a bulk and from the warehouse i supply then you will have a two types of scenarios okay few uh, how how do you define like whether your product is external procurement or internal procurement that we will discuss here so suppose say that your product uh, you are a large store okay uh, vendor ha vendor always have their own restrictions. So boss, I'll not supply like, you know, 10 products, 20 products to you. This is every vendor restriction because I cannot make a, a profit in that. Okay. Mm -hmm. The distribution, all the things. So uh, my minimum requirement is you, if you want to buy for a product from me, you buy 200. Not. Mm -hmm. Otherwise don't do I cannot give you like 20, 10 like that. I will not supply. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, because uh, they, that's a huge maintenance, customer maintenance and all the things. I can't invest that. I just manufacture mm -hmm. it. I sell you 200 quantity. So now you decide like whether, uh, suppose you are large store, your store is a very large store. Okay. Mm -hmm. You have a where like you have an inventory to store 200 units and you can easily sell that within a week. Okay. 200 mm -hmm. quantity. Then mm -hmm. you define that product as a external uh, procurement and so that you directly procure from the vendor. You mm. also have the small stores as well, some other places. Okay, they hardly sell 20 products. So, would you like to keep that product or sell, or you stop selling it? No, right? You you need to sell that product because that is also profit Correct. for you. For that, what you do, you have a distribution center. You maintain it. For that Correct. distribution center, you you buy a product uh, for your stores. What you take is you have a 10 stores. Every store is selling 20 stock units. So you collect uh, every from every store 20, 20, 20, 20, like that you'll have got 200. What you do, you place an order from the DC to vendor, 200 units, you get the packet, you get a lot, and you break bulk them like 20, 20, 20, and you distribute to store for selling, right? This is how the, uh, so your store will request DC and your DC will request vendor, you receive the goods at DC again, from the DC you uh, distribute the goods to the stores, okay? This is the okay. internal scenario. Okay, store is a requesting DC. That's an internal. Mm -hmm. Okay, if uh, uh, if your store is directly has a thing, that is an external scenario. Okay, external mm -hmm. procurement and internal procurement we discuss allocation mm -hmm. table, which I told you that you just create allocation tables. What I need in a future, you create it, mm -hmm. and then automatically there is a job every day. It is running. The allocation job will run, and it will create directly orders from the uh, allocation table what you are maintained retail promotions you know that the every time we will have like uh, in india you have a lot of festivals but uh, in europe region you know the christmas easter and uh, you know these all the festivals you will have a uh, few sales so you should make sure that your your stock also should be 
uh, your stock like uh, should be high during the before the period, right? If there is any Christmas coming on the Christmas day, you will have a huge sales. Considering that, you should make sure that like uh, two days or three days, based on the product type and all the things, okay, and the shelf life and everything, you should make sure that you should have a deliveries in your store of that product prior to the uh, promotion period start, okay. And the pass mm -hmm. inbound and outbound we discuss, and the sales order process, sales order we discuss, and the omni channel article availability and season management and the physical inventory, how you maintain this. Omni, all the topics omni channel means online, correct? Yes, omni channel means online stores you have, online, right? Omni online stores, online stores, how uh, that's a different, no, completely the process and everything. Like our, we have the omni channel article availability, like you know, this topic, like uh, uh, means how how do you think that it's a different or something like see, yeah, uh, because I worked in uh, um, uh, online business also mm -hmm. uh, for two years, so I mean, in Middle East, uh, I worked there as a uh, almost two and a half years in soup.com, okay. which is taken over by Amazon. Mm -hmm. Okay, offline is a uh, different, uh, yeah, both of the process uh, is uh, online, but online there are two systems one is a retail, but, uh, one is a market, yeah. marketplace, 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 it's called, yes, agree, yeah, yeah. marketplace. Now, can you tell me one thing? Does online will uh, have the inventory? Online in retail, you will have an inventory. In marketplace, you don't have an inventory. It is a drop. Then how right? how do they supply the goods actually? Uh, in e-commerce, uh, online uh, they will take the nearest to store stock actually. You know they pick the from the seller and they will deliver it to you. Yeah, store it depends seller. like how you define your business. Whenever you are placing a uh, 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 online, so online is something that I can be somewhere like suppose right now I am in a uh, Germany, like I am placing in a product. Okay, it's uh, based on my current geolocation. It will see what is my nearest to store in that. Okay, you give your while you are. So online, the customer first will register. While registering, he will give his address. From his address, you know, uh, online sales also consider from the nearest store. Suppose I am here in Germany and I just see what is my nearest location, nearest store. From the store, if the stock is available, then only I'll be placed an order. It, it automatically select from your geolocation. It will select the nearest stores here. Okay, it will yeah picture, yeah like uh, how the pic it picture of this it will take a four or five stores if uh, suppose there is a store nearest to me is a 500 meters and uh, there is a store nearest to me one kilometer so if first it will check with the nearest store of 500 meters if there is a no stock then it will give list of stores okay uh, there you need to give that location okay this store i can place an order or this store like that it will it automatically checks and uh, uh, this online sales is uh, the stock is checked over there the stock it automatically check its physical inventory store mm -hmm. stock and based on that it will place an order and when you place an order it automatically moves that stock from unrestricted to reserved stock means it is mm -hmm. already reserved for you Okay, even reserved the stock right. is present in store. Okay, you can't buy that because it's reserved and that is moved to the reserved stock. Okay, mm -hmm. that's how we, in the system it is done. Mm -hmm. okay. It, it okay. depends okay. how your business have that we cover all the topics, but uh, mm -hmm. you know, finally it's all about like uh, uh, how like uh, how you define your business model based on that you want to use. Some people doesn't use car at all. Okay, they still use the legacy system, but they want a ERP systems, SAP. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, some people due to car is one of the you know uh, repository like where you have all the sales and everything so that's all the thing we discuss over here mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Mm. Okay. Uh, okay so do you have any questions so uh, have you got an re understanding about what is retail and what we are going to do in our training uh, so uh, I can quickly go through the today's thing, or you want to start afresh with uh, so this no, is no, all no. you go through, you go through past. Now, I understand now, uh, mm -hmm. you go through, you go through past. Yeah, I just go through the topics, and uh, you know, I just like you can, you can uh, stop me if you have any questions, so we can discuss on that particular topic in different things, okay.
Okay. Uh, so you know, retail is an integrated retailing system. Okay, the process we discuss uh, as we discuss, like we define, like uh, what all the uh, whenever you are buying a retail system. Sorry? Hello. Can you keep the slide in the presentation mode? It's uh, small actually. Yes, yes. I put in a presentation mode. Are you able to still? Yeah, it is not a uh, it's uh, screen size. It's showing small, but it, uh, yes, it is available. Okay, okay. Uh, I think this is uh, one second. Uh, I put presentation mode. It is. You, know, you see it display settings, right? Uh, click over that. Click on display settings. One second. Actually, something like uh, I put some. Also, you see. Ah, okay. Where is the so, last time? Also, similar kind of thing. Ah, okay. So you can stop uh, sharing and uh, present again. Okay. I, think I think this is okay. This, this is, is okay. Like this is okay. Okay, that's yeah. that's great. Yeah. Let me move this one. Okay. Uh so okay, fine. Uh actually I connected to monitor, so the thing is it's a bit different. Uh, okay, fine. Uh, so as we discussed, you know, uh, we when we take a, uh, when we take a retail system, it is a completely integrated retail system. When we take a retail ERP module, we define that uh, what all the models to be there and uh, what kind of business process you do. Whether you do the assortment strategies, you do some processes, or you do logistical distribution and all the things. Okay, you define that based on that. You define your retail system completely. Mm -hmm. okay. Uh, so whenever you take a SAP IS retail, so like uh, what it has is it completely consists of like 30% major consists of retail processes and like you know as we discuss it contains 30% MM and 10% warehouse management and 30% uh, sales distribution. So you also have like you know whenever you get a ERP module right, you also have that TM and uh, warehouse management processes within that like to create outbound delivery and to do the picking packing and all that thing. Yeah. but yeah. if you are a very good retail like you know very uh, um, uh, big retail uh, business uh, okay when you have a, a very you, you don't use this 10% um, warehouse management in the sap rp module you always buy ewm module which is a separate module which is integrated to sap rp because uh, because of the performance issues and they have they have like uh, enhanced function modules ewp okay. ewm enhanced war, uh, warehouse management warehouse management oh, okay yeah so but when you buy the erp module it also have the warehouse management of 10% processes okay like doing the picking packing outbound delivery and all the things okay okay so this is uh, uh, something like a complete uh, block diagram for the SAP solutions for retail. Like you have like, you know, uh, omni-channel customer experience where you have the SAP CRM and uh, SAP POS and hybrid commerce shoot. And here in the marketing merchandising you do through car applications. And uh, if you are having some, uh, uh, Ariba is a, one of the, again, a module, uh, which is, you know, uh, for, uh, procurement complete like a uh, uh, it's a central procurement you can say that okay and ecom and the vistex is a pricing model vistex is a separate company here and as i said the supply chain we have the sap fnr forecast and replenishment and we have uh, sap ewm and the tm ewm is the enhanced warehouse management and the tm is a transportation management when it comes to the sap master data like uh, before the s4 hana we used to have the ecc 
there we used to do all the master data management just go to the mm43 mm42 like that we used to go and we used to maintain the article master but now we have the enhanced tool like mdg master data governance so you know where you for the all the changes and everything that you do through that mdg tool okay and you also have hybrid product content management you know every time the characteristics or the images or the some product characters will be changes like you can use the these are sap products all are sap products okay okay uh, other product than content management huh? yeah product content management for omni channel this is yeah yeah content management it's not omni channel it's a central central level you central. maintain the product custom okay product content ah okay okay okay, okay, okay. So suppose you are you are you, either for the inbound or outbound like you know uh, see sap will have their own business suits okay now it's up to you whether you want to like uh, suppose till today most of the people use the uh, 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 like a fki system that uh, fk and you might heard about fki systems for their warehouse management okay mm -hmm. some people use the ewm some people use them fki systems and other legacy systems because mm -hmm. their performance is better than the uh, our ewm uh, uh, okay mm -hmm. but they integrate with the sap again okay okay and they, okay and the pos as well like uh, retail j systems they use the pos tails so because their their the, the system that uh, you know the, the logic implementation and everything is very comfortable in that other legacy systems so and they integrate again with the sap erp module like that okay but this is a sap product which we are discussing you should know about it and the other legacy systems until unless you get into the business then only you will get to know every business use the different different uh, uh, legacy systems for their process retail process okay okay at the end they they all the systems all the legacy systems are very uh, uh, you know uh, they are will be integrated to sap erp system erp is a central system okay okay and the open text as well open text the finance people like uh, they use it and uh, real time customer and business insight like they have like you know every for everyday process we have the car and hybrid data management and omni channel customer maintenance like uh, you know sap is digital system fms on hana oh, but we, if you if you are doing only retail process you buy is retail suppose you also have some uh, fashion management services then you will buy F fms module on top of it okay and the finance cfm and success factors success factors are the hr process and all the things mm -hmm. okay okay so when you are come like uh, the organized structure or enterprise structure is will be like this okay you have first client is, client is nothing but system okay mm -hmm. okay then under that you define your company code it's a four digit alpha numerical number okay and for the company code you also define your business area what is your business area and uh, for the financial process you define the controlling area and the operation concern and uh, that's all and uh, you also have the sales organization under the sales organization you have the distribution channel like how you distribute your products by in store or you through do through online or uh, you know you also do the trading that all the distribution channels uh, under that you have some design division and what is your sales area what are your sales offices and sales group and this always continue with the same hierarchy and if we have our plants plants are nothing but a stores or storage locations or the distribution centers okay so that's how it defined like for each definition you define like with a diff different code like whether it is a what is your plant is it a manufacturing unit or is it just a storage location or it's a warehouse unit okay or is it a shipping unit that all the things you define it so whenever you define your uh, enterprise structure you this is the overview of it but based on your project and your uh, business you define how you want to define your thing but client will be same okay one you okay. need okay so this is your partner partner is nothing but a vendor a partner like uh, if i just want to let you know uh, how the partner will be there okay uh, so i will take one example okay uh, suppose you have some uh, 
you are a vendor okay uh, means vendor is nothing but you supply some goods okay you okay. have a company you have a manufacturing unit at a uh, uh, somewhere at a south side like kerala because there you have uh, say that you are uh, coconut oil is your product so you always like to keep your manufacturing unit uh, near to the place where there is a lot of production right correct agree uh, so that's the reason you put in a kerala you are uh, in a kerala you put a, your manufacturing unit okay uh, you, and you do the manufacturing you also have a plant and you from there only you supply the goods okay mm. but you get a lot of orders from the delhi so uh, so what you do is uh, uh, you uh, you you manufacture over there and you supply the goods like you or else you do the manufacturing you extract the coconut oil and you have one more division unit in hyderabad say that in the hyderabad you have that label printing and everything like processing and label printing from there you supply the goods okay but mm -hmm. you are main organization is there at delhi because if you if i want to order something like a parachute coconut oil i always could call delhi address only right okay so you will have a different different vendor and uh, part vendor if you define a vendor you will define multiple partners to it okay mm -hmm. uh, why the partner whenever i am placing an order i'll place an order from to delhi a partner okay but uh, my i should pay invoice to the mumbai partner there is a partner in uh, where they do the accounting and everything okay but my goods will be supplied from hyderabad but the actual uh, uh, process, processing is done from the uh, kerala that's kerala. how you mm. find the partner whenever you are mm. defining your vendor like your parachute company so you have a different different partners so uh you define a partner determination what is the partner and what he does he does only the ordering he will do ordering. the ordering okay the other partner will do the invoicing the billing if you see if you have placed some uh, order from the amazon as well uh, suppose you place an order to amazon from the amazon you will place it but the vendor will be somewhere and he will do the invoicing okay invoicing party will be different and the pay you are the pay will be different you will have the billing address and shipping address all the things so that's how it is. so the supplier will be different and the pay will be different suppose you have something uh, problem with the product and you want to return it okay so in that case you put a written order you will give this ordering address all the things that this is the return order address and he will collect all the information but the payment is done from the different uh, vendor, okay but okay. your payment will be set written payment so that's how it is this okay. is how the whenever you define the partner you these are the res responsibilities for the customer as well like what is sold to party who is the goods recipient and who is the payer who is the bill to party who is the contact person and who is the carrier yeah, and yeah. the responsible employee okay who is the one who is going to take it Oh, just give me a second i'll take a water yeah sorry so now we discuss about the site master uh, just to let you know we are just discussing overview we will go into the system after few discussions okay after like few learnings few classes we will go into the system whatever we discuss at that point we will discuss at some level as well how do you maintain all these things okay okay yeah now it's about the site master as i said that site master can be a manufacturing unit or the uh it's a actual store sale selling unit sales point or the distribution center anything okay so that's how like from the central purchasing like you do like either it's a di distribution center or 
even the distribution center also you have the central distribution or rdc regional distribution center like how, that's how you distribute it okay and this is the stores and the, from the store uh, you send to the customer and you know again from the stores you also send to the departmentals and uh, from the distribution center you also directly keep in the storage location which is a warehouse number hmm. this is a different functions of a site master how you define it okay Okay. <laughs> and how they they use and how they uh, supplied or how they receive. So suppose in your business it can be like it's a store distribution center. From the store from the DC you just supply goods to the store. Okay. It can be something like from the store you directly sell to the center or from the stores you can directly sell to your customer. Mm -hmm. All like that. <laughs> and uh, article master data so whenever you define article master data it's just not like a simple product because it has a different kind of character so at a, uh, like it, you need to define like you are just a, uh, example like t -shirt. so a t-shirt can have a different characters like color yellow or red and it also have the sizes sizes so all the yeah, these all the things you need to define your uh, at a product. So uh, even because uh, if you don't define the characteristics, what is the problem? I will I would say you. So uh, you have introduced your product and without any characteristics. So how the product sold, you can't understand. So for the next manufacturing process, so you don't know that. Uh, so you understood that the sales are done only to the size 38. Okay, this is the product which was sold higher and this 36 and 40 still the stock are left. So for the next manufacturing, I should if I am producing 100 quantity, I make sure that 38 should be done 80% and the 36 and 40 should be done only 20%. Okay, hmm. but how do I know that if I don't uh, maintain these characteristics in the system, I don't get the proper sales information which uh, generic uh, which uh, character article has sold high right it just says that it's a t-shirt but which t-shirt uh, and the next also like uh, uh, this one uh, i sold like uh, 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 this time i manufactured like 30 30 40 i have uh, in that way i have produced it and 38 has completely sold and 40 has sold only 10 percent and 90 percent are still remaining in the store and 36 are still remaining by the next manufacturing again i do the same process and everything will be uh, the stock will be kept as it is if you don't define the characteristics so the characteristics are main uh, very important for every article master okay okay and uh, when we discuss about the assortment and the listing uh, you know uh, listing is a mandatory for a product okay you should uh, like um, you cannot keep the whenever you go to the sponsors you see that everything has been layout listed and uh, everything has been uh, like these are the fruit section where you get a fruits or fresh vegetables okay these are like you know the uh, clothing section you can get only clothing over here these are electronic section so that's all the things you can do using the assortments listing is nothing but whether the product is present in the store or not that gives the listing okay creation and item creation you're talking about no listing is the item creation system item creation not sir uh, product availability in a store is called listing. In a store, store. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Oh yeah, correct, correct. So I say that uh, you you have a something like big bazaar. There are three big bazaars in uh, different different location. You may see that one particular product is present in the uh, like uh, region one, but it is not present in the region two and three because the yeah. product is listed in the region one because that was high uh, the product that sold over there but not in the other regions that's the reason I did yes because of the catchment area yeah obviously because uh, i say that uh, that product is, uh, is bought area, only that region because that people only yeah. that the, yeah that uh, yeah uh, yeah that's the reason that uh, has been listed in that assortment and all the things fine okay? fine fine understand understand <laughs> this is all, all about assortment and listing 
uh, mm -hmm. like how the assortments are uh, like uh, articles have been differentiated and how they put in the layout model and the layout has been assigned to the like whenever you put the layout model to the store then only the articles present in the layout module and then one to n and into n into one mapping it's like it will be listed all the articles will be listed to that store okay mm -hmm. the articles present in the layout module will be uh, layout listed to the store okay 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 uh, just give me a second <clears throat> okay uh, you are able to see my screen right yes yes yeah yeah so so this is how the uh, assortment and the pricing so you know as i told you before uh, you define your pricing procedure there is a cal price calculation schema is there you need to define your price model like what is your sales price and uh, uh, like what is in the sales price you you, you know the sales price will be unique but uh, you have a different different region specific taxes will be there like suppose europe region there is a different tax structure okay for each country so you need to uh, all these are like g conditions okay even though there is a standard but every business has their own uh, uh, calculation of price so we uh, define the price calculation schema and whenever you are introducing new price to a product so it does the calculation and it defines the final price of a product how my price final price should be there okay okay and uh, <clears throat> merchandise distribution like how you do the goods receipts like how you do the uh, how you do goods issue from the warehousing and what is a cross docking cross docking means suppose if you are receiving a product from uh, vendor to dc like you just like there are three different types like cross dock and break bulk and uh, uh, flow through it's like uh, how it is like you know uh, if the store has requested 100 quantity okay this time and i need to i got a from vendor also like you know the 100 quantity okay okay so but it comes via dc okay because i, I from mm. the dc like there is a particular vendor he is supplying three four products like uh, okay uh, i place yeah. all order together so that i can save some costing okay if I place minimum value something from the vendor, I get some, you know, uh, if you make some 100, G, uh, like 100 GBP, I'll give you some 10% discount. On that basis, like I am placing an order. I'm not using external procurement, even though from a store, I can place directly order to vendor. But uh, if I directly buy from the vendor, uh, so for single product, like I, I need to pay something like uh, 100 euros. But if I buy through the DC, the DC, because DC put a maximum order to, for all stores, it collides and uh, it will place maximum order to vendor, right? So mm -hmm. if there is a value restriction there with the vendor. So if I make a maximum value, it's not a quantity mm -hmm. restriction, it is a value restriction. So I get a, some discount as well as I can get the required quantity. So in that case, uh, always store will uh, get the products from the DC, but there is nothing like 100 quantity is there you just need to pass it that's all to the store okay uh, the goods come via dc and from the dc it will go to the store that's all flow through 100 quantity and there is a something like break bulk we discussed like break bulk is nothing but store has requested only 50 quantity okay uh, uh, but uh, how it will be like a, a store one and store two store three okay store one has requested 50 quantity store two has requested 30 quantity and store three has uh, requested 20 quantity total 20 quantity. Quantity. i got a 
from uh, I placed via DC, I placed an order to vendor. 100. 100. Yeah, I got 100 quantity, but now I need to distribute it. What I need to do is I got everything in a bulk. So what I do is I break the bulk and 50 quantity, I'll make a separate package. I send to store one and 30 quantity, I'll make a separate package and send to store two and 20 quantity, I'll make a separate package and send to store three. So this allocation. is allocation. Yes. The, no, this is not allocation. This is a, yeah, uh, you can. It's a better allocation. allocation. No? It's a better allocation. It's, it varies in a way. It's allocation. It's a, it's, it's a, uh, it's a allocation means you uh, means from the general term you call that as allocation, but in SAP term we don't call this as allocation. Okay. Okay. Fine. 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 It, it's call it distribution okay, profile. Nice. It's a distribution mm -hmm. process. Uh, distribution of a goods to the store. Okay. When you say, okay. uh, yeah, in a general term, if you call that allocation, now automatically the standard allocation, you know, we have a different thing. Okay. That comes okay. into the okay. Okay. and people oh, will okay. get kind of confused. Okay? okay. This is the distribution. Yeah. Okay, that's okay. how you define over there. How you are, okay. uh, how you distribute the products to the store. Okay, and mm -hmm. uh, last one is the cross dock. Cross dock is nothing but you know how it would be. Uh, yeah, the same thing. I say that <clears throat> here you are breaking the bulk and doing that. So vendor has same restriction, hundred quantity. The same thing you take it 50, 30, 20. Here, mm -hmm. where I request the vendor. Boss, I can't separate again as you already sending me 100 quantity. You make sure that uh, in one pallet you send me 50, in other pallet you send me 30, in other pallet you send me 20. Altogether 100. That's how you send me so that my distribution cross docking like you to store will be very easy, right? I need not to do again separate packing to that, right? Agree? That's how you define. Okay. Uh, okay. Promotions, as we said, that you know, promotions are nothing, or promotions, dips are something, everything is called nothing, uh, like they are the demand influence factors. Okay. okay. Uh, you just uh, create a promotions. If there are any, uh, there will be different types of promotions will be there. Okay. Uh, and different reasons as well, like uh, unexpected promotions will be there. Like due to COVID, uh, there was a toilet paper issue was there. Okay. Mm. There was there are unseasonal dips demand influence factors. Okay, mm -hmm. there are seasonal. Seasonals are nothing but Christmas. Christmas happens mm -hmm. every year this particular period. Easter Easter happens every year on April during that time. Okay, uh, there are some uh, country specific festivals will be there where uh, you know that are seasonal dips. Okay, where it is predefined and there are like you know. <clears throat> uh, some weather well, due to weather there might be some issues whether uh, weather related dips will be there weather related promotions will be there okay mm. uh, so say that uh, now i can say yeah now winter is coming okay winter may you cannot predict this one this is not seasonal this may not winter i can say that it's like uh, uh, there is kind of uh, uh, floods or something is about to come flood like some hurricane is about to come mm, 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 mm. due to that there might be the scarce of good due to that there will be huge sales in your store where the people mm. come and uh, try to keep the stock in the houses uh, as the mm. hurricane is coming to like hoodwood or some other things okay mm -hmm. so these things and uh, different types of promotions you will have like discount percentage discount value and bonus by buy one get one free all these kinds of promotions will be there okay you do always assign it depends like you want to assign at a sales organization level if you assign at a sales organization level this is uh, applicable to all stores under the sales organization it, it, you can also assign at a store specific promotion it is nothing but only this store can have this promotion okay mm. okay <clears throat> And uh, next topic, we are almost all done, okay, for today. Uh, yeah, it's fine, it's fine. Yeah, I understood, I understood. Uh, yeah. So, so the, yeah, the yeah. inventory <laughs> management, like how you receive the goods, how you place the goods, and how you do the lookup, and every time you need to do the physical inventory, you should make sure mm -hmm. that what is my physical stock and my what is my actual stock. You need to do the reconciliation. And uh, if there are any differences, you need to adjust the stock. Sometimes you see that um, uh, in a system there is a huge stock, but uh, in the store there is no the sufficient stock. That that differences every time you need to do calculate the differences and you need to adjust the stock. Okay. 
someone has made a mistake suppose someone has recorded like in store that there was only 50 quantity he did not count it properly okay and uh, in a system it is 100 quantity if you don't adjust properly suppose it might be the his uh, wrong calculation or it might be something that there are uh, some scrapping is done but uh, someone has not put that uh, scrapping information so that inventory inventory calculation should be done very uh, proper way otherwise it may lead to some uh, losses because some customer has placed an order online order uh, without uh, by looking because it check always the system stock not the actual stock okay uh, due to mm. the wrong calculation you has committed to customer and customer came but you don't see the stock in the inventory so that's the reason every every time that uh, fiscal inventory calculation the reconciliation should be done so we have the standard tool that uh, thing and uh, if there are any differences uh, so system will give some uh, uh, information so that the physical inventory manager like he will go and he will check the actual stock and he will report it okay <clears throat> okay these are the point of sales from the database server like you know the fed of is like point of sales system when out the electronic system you register it, right? so the sales it will come to the server and from the server you will get to the sales information it will come to the car or a cloud information and from the cloud it will pass as a wpo born idoc the sales information comes to the erp database server okay okay uh so yeah uh, these are the advanced modules like in sap uh, is retail like uh, you know merchandise assortment planner as well as uh, sap uh, retail store srs so uh, this just what we can discuss about it so first these are separate or what sorry merchandise assortment planner is a separate module or you will cover yes, yeah, sap always uh, try to buy uh, sell a lot modules to you okay for each and everything like for assortment planner also you have a separate uh, module merchandise planner is also separate business you can say that uh, business suit if you buy a car this is a business suit which you need to buy all the things you need to pay separately for that so srs is also it's like it's not you don't buy different system in the same system you have a erp system is central system okay and a car is a separate system if you want to buy pmr and all the things you need to have a car module under that you have a this suits business suits okay opp you want to have a business suit you need to buy that and uh, udf you want to use it you need to buy that separately that suit and all the things okay okay <coughs> okay so so this is all for today and i hope you uh, uh, understood my process or uh, the retail process overview of retail how it would be yeah yeah then, uh, excellent yeah. excellent do you have any questions on the like you know the retail process like do you still want to uh, know some information how the retail works or like like i how i face you you have any challenges like uh, uh means you have faced any challenges and you didn't understand about this process i can i'm here to help you no no it's very okay. clear as that even uh, you know as a demonstration it is a very clear yeah and a okay. uh, lot of information you shared i understood which i don't know at all and it's excellent very good yeah okay then yeah uh navin are you there yeah yeah i'm there i'm there yeah so uh, yeah, so uh, ramna do you have any more queries ramna or else uh, we'll connect offline okay uh no nothing uh as nothing as such uh so okay. Sagar, Mr. Sagar, you are based in Hyderabad? No, no, I am based in Europe, Germany. Yeah. Ah, okay, 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 okay. Yeah. Okay. So, it's uh, it's fine. No, I thought of uh, like uh, you know, if we are in Hyderabad, we might be we can meet. No, there's no problem. Uh, it's fine, uh, Mr. Sagar. It's. Uh, yeah. Okay then. Yeah. Navin, uh, do you want me to leave or? Yeah, yeah, leave? that's fine, Sagar. Yeah. We yeah. can wind okay. up for this. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Ravin, and thank you, Ramna, for yeah, for your patience. Thanks, too. thanks, thanks, Mr. <laughs> no, 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 you have shared a great information. It is very good. It is a very good uh, presentation, and uh, I learned a lot <laughs> within the span of one and a half hour. It's a great information. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, thank you. Have a nice week. Bye. Thank you, and same to you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hello.
Hello. Here, Anu, we'll connect offline. I'll call you after some time. Okay, 30-40 minutes. I'll call you. Hmm? Yeah. Okay. Fine. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.